uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> and the verse is going to be uh, 12 through 16. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. This message is somewhat directed to our youth, but it is a word that all of us uh, could definitely use. We're going to read from the easy to read version. I know that's not a, a, a familiar version that we read from, but again, I'm trying to get a message to our young people. Amen. And um, if you thought the message was very plain and simple and you never read the easy to read version, uh, take a look at it sometime. And, um, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a great version to read. Amen. First Timothy chapter four. And the verse is going to be 12 through 16. The Bible says, you are young, but don't let anyone treat you as if you are not important. Well, be an example to show the believers how they should live. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all probably got in your feelings with that. Okay. Come on. Show them by what you say, by the way you live, by your love, by your faith, and by your pure life. Amen. Continue to read the scriptures to the people. Encourage them and teach them. Mm -hmm. Do this until I come. Remember to use the gift you have, which was given to you through a prophecy. When a group of elders laid their hands yes, on you, All right. continue to do these things. Give your life to doing them. Then everyone can see your work is progressing. Mm -hmm. Be careful in your life and in your teaching. Continue to live and teach rightly. Then you will save yourself and those who listen to your teaching. Amen. While you are having your seats, if you will, I would like to also uh, go to the next chapter. This came to me this morning, so you would not see this on the screen, but 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, and it goes along with our uh, message on this morning. It says, don't speak angrily to an older man. All right. But talk to him as if he were your father. Treat the younger men like brothers. Treat the older women like mothers. All right. And treat the younger women with respect like sisters. I would like to speak to you on this morning from the topic of the age ain't nothing but a number. Age ain't nothing but a number. Now come on back. I know some of y'all went somewhere else. Don't tune me out right now. This just walk with me if you will. Age ain't nothing but a number. What Paul is doing, Paul is writing this letter to his son in the faith, which is Timothy. And we see that Timothy is a young man because Paul starts off by saying, let no man despise thy youth. Paul understood what Timothy was getting ready to go through. We see in Acts chapter 26 and verse number four that Paul himself was a young man when he began his ministry. So he understood what it was that Timothy was getting ready to go through as he was about to start his ministry. And he also knew what he needed to do in order to have a successful ministry. Timothy was sent to Ephesus by his uh, father in the gospel, Paul. And Paul already had already knew that there was going to be some resistance from the church because of Timothy youthful age. And see, the Bible doesn't really inform us on how old Timothy was. Some scholars say that Timothy was as young as 18, and some say he was as old as 40. But back in the Bible days, if you was 40 or below, you was considered a youth or you was considered a young person. Now, when we look at the uh, uh, chapter uh, four here, we see that Paul starts off verse number 12 by saying, let no man despise thy youth. That word despise means to think against, to look down or frown upon, to, to disregard as if you are nothing. And we should be not guilty of judging somebody based on their age. And believe it or not, there are people, young people, who will not allow somebody younger than them to teach them or to tell them anything. And we say things like, I've been studying this Bible longer than you've been alive. Uh, uh, you have not lived your life, or what is there that you can tell me? 
That's right, young people. You can have all the knowledge in the world in the area that you're trying to teach. You have done all your studies. You can have all the degrees behind your name and you can know exactly what you are talking about. But there's going to be some people that would not listen to you all because of the two digits that you have behind your name. And so as Paul is uh, talking, to, talking to Timothy, he's telling him, let no man despise that youth whatsoever. He said that you too, young people, you can be in an example to us adults. Godly wisdom and godly living does not necessarily have anything to do with age. It's all about how you yield and how you submit yourself to Christ. Godly wisdom doesn't uh, have to come from a physical age, but it comes from Christ and his word. And so, young people, if I'm a be real with you on this morning, and if I'm going to be honest with you on this morning, believe it or not, young people, uh, we adults, we do make mistakes. Uh, we done made mistakes. We're going to make mistakes, and, and, and we have made some bad decisions in our lives. And church, it's about time that we be uh, real and relevant with our young people, and we start sharing our story with them, because some of us uh, walk around here like we got a halo over our head as if we never done anything, and when our young people get in some trouble, we frown upon them as if We've never been in their position before, but it's time that we need to be real with them. So how can we be an example? How can we be this example that Paul is speaking of to Timothy? The first thing we need to do is that we need to use pleasant and kind words. That's the speech that he's talking about. Colossians 4, 6 tells us that we ought to season our words with salt. Now, I, I don't know who's done this, and, and it all depends on what type of diet you may be on, but have you ever went to a store, to the meat market, brought you some ribs, brought you uh, some meat, and, and you take it back home, you clean it up, and you immediately put it on the grill, well, or you immediately put it in the oven with no seasoning on it? Nah, you, 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 I'm sure you, I'm, I know you have it. Because when you take it out and you, and you eat that meat, it's going to be nasty. Yes, sir. And then when you throw some Bojo seasoning on it, Sister Brown, on it ribs, it, it brings some flavor to it. It, it, it gives you a, a nice taste in your mouth. And that's what Paul is trying to tell us when we're talking to each other. We ought to respect each other with our words. When we're talking to our young people, we ought to uh, talk with them with pleasant words, with some kind words. Uh, and, and, and while I'm on this topic, uh, uh, stop talking to your kids as if they are not nothing. Come on to you. Come on. Yeah, they're going to get on your nerves, but that's not the time to tell them uh, that they're a garden tool. That's not the time to tell them that they're a female dog. That's not the time to tell them that they'll never be anything in life. And when little Johnny gets older, you wonder why he's always locked up in the room, or you wonder why he always talking to you any kind of way and putting his hands on you, and you wonder why he's disrespecting adults, or you wonder why they resent you when you get older. Some of y'all can't say man because you those parents that talk to your kids like that. Some of y'all can't say amen because you sitting next to that person, that friend or that relative that talk to them kids that in any kind of way. And instead of you standing up and letting that person know that you are in the wrong, you sit there and you just as wrong as them by letting them go and preach them all. I know I'm preaching, you gotta tell me. Secondly, oh, I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I'm almost done, but I'm ready now. <laughs> I'm ready. I told you about 10 minutes now. Come on now. I'm ready. Secondly, secondly, we need to seek. We need to seek a holy life. Yes, sir. That's the purity. That's that pure life that Paul is speaking of. Young people, don't miss this. Young people, you are in a position right now to where you are living your best life. Come on. Trying to live your blessed life. Like, oh, come on, one more time, one more time. Young people, they just don't hype me up, man. I, I turn to a Baptist preacher real quick and start tuning to them. Young people, you are in a position to where you are living your best, your best life. You have no worries in the world. And you are looking to live your blessed life. Your blessed life is when you uh, grow old and you get wisdom and, you, and you're and able to share your knowledge and, 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 and encourage those who are up under you uh, with some kind words. Young people, you have no worries in the world. Amen. Amen. Respect your parents. Those in authority. Do great in school. Amen. Make wise choices. Do your chores. Young people, don't rush into being an adult. Amen. Because I can tell you that it's so overrated. <laughs> Ain't no going back. 
Ain't no going back, bro. Being an adult is so overrated, bro. Brown. I, it's kind of. I, I remember when I used to ask my mama for some money, and she would always say, "I ain't got no money." And I wonder, when well, you go to work every day, you get a paycheck every two weeks, once a month, or you know whatever. And what you mean you got no money? And now I got married, and and I got me two kids. Journey on how to ask for money, yet, but I got a wife who asked for money. And I'm like, I ain't got no money. Young people, stay young. As long as you can, because being an adult is so overrated. Take the time, take the time to, to learn yourself. Take the time to uh, know your worth. Take the time to explore the many options that you will have when it comes to your life. See, the, the adult part, if the Lord sees fit, he, he's going to make a way for you. you you're going to get there. There's no, no need of you trying to rush to be an adult. And, and when it does, you will be more prepared to handle some situations as some of us were not able to handle. The third thing we need, or the third thing that we can do in order to be uh, in an example to one another is that we need to love unconditionally. I think I'm taking my time on this. All right. Like Tina Turner said, you may be asking, well, what's love got to do, got to do with it? Yeah. To love someone unconditional means that despite their flaws and their shortcomings, you still love them. All right. Despite the life that they used to live, we always so quick to throw up somebody's past in their face when it's time to get in an argument or something. So despite the life that they used to live, you still love them. You're not bringing up their past. You love them without expecting anything in return. All right. The hardest thing, the hardest thing about loving someone is loving a person that you know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that they don't love you. Or that they don't care for you, or that they can't stand you. And, and who's simply your enemy. But in John chapter 15 and verse number 12, he says that this is my commandment. It is commanded to love each other. If that wasn't good enough for you, then I have you go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. He says, love your enemies. He says in Romans chapter 13 and, and verse 10, it's the law to love each other. In Luke chapter 6, verse 27 uh, through 28, he says, bless them who curse you. If I was in the Baptist church, they'll be uh, hyping me up right now. Because yeah. I have my instruments Come on. behind and they're going in a little voice like this and says in Galatians chapter 4, uh, love your neighbors. Uh, he said in First John 4, 11, but love, let us love one another. Peter Turner said, what's love got to do with it? Well, in John chapter 3 and verse 16, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whitney Houston says, and that's why it is the greatest love of all. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you can't stand me. I don't care if you don't like the word that I'm doing. If you want to go to heaven, you got to love. Come on, come on. We need to stop player hating on each other and, and, and love each other more. We, we, we need to stop looking for the wrong in people. And as Spike Lee says, we need to do the right thing. Come on, it was, come on, it was God who loved you in spite of your sins. It was God who loved you when you made that promise to him and you broke that promise. It was God who loved you when you betrayed him. It was God who loved you when you turned your back against him. It was God who loved you when you was looking for that advice and you turned to your girlfriend and your, and your best friend and you didn't want to turn to God. It was God who loved you when everybody else would love you. And fourth, we need to keep the right attitude. That's the positive part that Paul is speaking of. Young people, don't let negative vibes bring you down. Stay encouraged. Stay motivated. That, that, that was the message that Brother Johnson, Matthew Johnson, Amen. had given to our young people on yesterday. He shared his story through the voice. And he talked about going through the audition. And he talked about how he had this one song in mind. Amen. And it was a gospel song. I believe it was Kirk Franklin, I Smile. And he had done practice the song and he was ready to sing it. And, and once he got to the audition, uh, there was a producer or one of the contestants that told him that's not what they want to hear. Come on, come on. And so now he's at the audition thinking if he should change his song. Yeah. 
after he done practiced all uh, all day, all night for this particular song. So now he's stuck between a rock and a hard place, whether he should have seen this song and listen to this voice that done told him not to sing it, or should he continue to just sing the song that he was going to go with. Come on. So as he further went into his story, he talked about how he decided to stick with his plan. Young people have a plan. Don't let nobody bring it down and change your mind. So he went through with his plan. And he sung the song, I Smile. And the producers loved it. He went on to the next round. And he stated that he got this phone call. And, and, and said, Matthew, you made it to the next round. We need you in LA, California on next week. So he flew up to LA for a few days. And, and so at that particular time, he said that they give you a song to sing. Come on, well, so at well. that time, they gave him the song John Legend, a, a John Legend song. Yes, he yes. practiced the song, he was ready for it. So while he was in the waiting room with all the other contestants, they made an announcement that said, Matthew Johnson, once everyone dismissed, we need you to stay in the room. Hmm. At this time, he did not know what was going on. He was scared, he was nervous. And so he's trying to figure out what's going on. And so the producers talked to him and said, Matthew, we know we sent you a song, and we know you probably were prepared for it and you're ready for it, but we want you to sing that Kirk Franklin song you did at the last audition. If you missed that, young people, what you have to do is that you have to have a plan. And you have to have a written mind, and you have to be focused on the plan, and you have to uh, be determined that you're going to go through with what you're planning. There's going to be a voice. There's going to be friends who's going to tell you that you're too young for this. They're going to tell you that it's never been done. They're going to tell you you never amount to anything. They're yes, going to tell you that you're never going to achieve your goals. But what you have to do is you have to go through your plan that God has given you. If I had a sermon topic for that, it would be a Drake song, God's plan. Come on, Ma. Preach, Ma. So we all need to keep that right attitude. Yes, sir. We need to stay encouraged. We need to stay, stay motivated. We all know that one person who always have an attitude. Mm -hmm. Nothing you do or say is acceptable to this person. Nothing about your spirit is good. And it's so bad, now we won't see how honest y'all gonna be. It's so bad that when you see this person walking towards you, you turn another way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what you do, Brother Brown, you get on the phone, you know about on the phone, and you start having a conversation. Yes, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. So what I do, I'll be flying out uh, to Philadelphia next week. And, and it's like you don't want to be bothered with this person's spirit because you, you know that they just have this bad attitude and you just know that nothing but negative vibes come with them. Come on. And so when your attitude is not in line with God's model, you are in a dangerous position. Mm -hmm. Bad attitude loves bitterness. It loves anger. It loves resentment. It loves unforgiveness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Young people, uh, don't you ever be known for gossiping. Right. Don't you ever be known for criticizing others or always quick to give your opinion, especially when it's not Ask for. All right. When you have that plan, some people, young people, <laughs> you have some people who are going to be upset with you, or you're going to have some people who don't like you because of what God has anointed you to do. Being anointed don't always mean coming. Or it's not always about church. It's not all about singing or, or preaching. We, when we think about that word anointed, we think about church. No, no, no. Being anointed is whatever gift God has placed on you. And you're going to have some folks, young people, that are just going to hate you because you're just good at what you do. You're great at what you do. Let, 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 can, can, I'm, I'm talking man, man. Cute. Hey, can, I, can I have a, a, a conversation with man, man real quick? Let me see if I get one of the shares real quick. Man, man, come here. Sit right down. Just gonna be me and you. It's just me and you talking. This brother, he'll have a gift. If y'all don't know what his gift is, he do mind dancing. I'm Paul, you young Timothy. 
what you have to understand is that there are some people that hate that you have a gift that they can't have. Just me and you talk. What you have to realize is that you have to move forward. You gotta press forward. And you gotta follow what God tells you. And those people who are upset with you because you are good and what you do, you tell them to take it up with God. You tell them that maybe your God just ain't as good as my God and maybe you ought to give my God a try. You continue to stay motivated. You continue to stay encouraged. That's the kind of talk we got to have with our young people because, see, we, we, we get so caught up. We get so caught up in forgetting that we was in their position at one time. We, we, we get so caught up uh, to where when we are trying to bring young people in the church, when we trying to bring that, that young man in the church and he's coming in here sagging with dreads, we so quick to judge him, but we're not even thankful that, let's be thankful that he's in this place and he's not out there. We get so caught up as far as not wanting to share our stories with our young people. What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? We ought to be open and honest with our young people. Because I tell you one thing, if we don't teach them, they're going to learn it out there, and it's going to be a lesson that you wish they wouldn't have learned, and that you had the opportunity to be able to speak to them and to be able to encourage them and keep them motivated. As I get ready to close, a few mistakes that churches make with their youth, and we'll even say with their young adults. The first mistake that we make is that we dismiss them. We sometimes overlook their ideas or their thoughts they may have when it comes to church. Because we think that they are young, that they have nothing that they can do to help us grow. We view them as an afterthought. We view them as not being ready to contribute anything, or, or we view them as not being mature enough to, to be ready to share anything. And what we're trying to do, and it's actually the focus of, of the relationship, is that we're trying to bridge the gap. We're trying to bring together our old and our new. So many times we, we get so caught up in not wanting to be bothered with our young people because we don't want to take on the, the trouble and the stress and the aggravation that they may have. But church, what we have to realize is that it's a church family that they're looking for. It's that love that they are looking for. That young person can teach the old and the old can teach the young. So to my young people, what you have to do is respect your elders. Simply, yes ma'am, yes sir, no ma'am, no sir. You have to have that respect for elders. And then to the seasoned members, what we have to do is we have to know how to come to our young people correct. One thing I deal with, I'll tell you one thing that, that, that I deal with is that I've, I've probably known everybody here, you know, all my life. And one thing that, that is a struggle is that some people, young people, no matter how old you get, no matter what type of career you have, no matter how long you've been married, how many kids you have, how long you done raise your family, some people still gonna look at you as a little child. Amen. And I know I ain't gonna get no claps on that because some of y'all do that. <laughs> but as Timothy, or as Paul told Timothy, he said, let no man despise that youth. So you can't let that bother you. Because if you do that, then what you're gonna do is allow that person to keep you in the bubble. You're going to allow that person to build some unforgiveness up in your heart. You're going to allow that person to keep you in a spot that God has not or do not want you to be in. And that's why I was telling man, man, you can't get upset with what God has anointed a young person to do. We got to get out this mindset that our young people, our youth, don't mean anything to us. I'm not saying we have that issue at Northbound, but I do want to get a handle on before we get to that. I believe yesterday definitely showed that we do care about our young people. And we are thankful for those volunteers and for those parents who, who came out to help this youth ministry grow. But we got some haters, y'all. We got some haters, y'all. I said we got some haters, y'all. And what we have to realize is that it's always not those who are outside that's hating on us. Sometimes it can be our own people right here in our own house. But I'm here to tell you, 
Whether you like it, you don't like it, we got to love each other. Whatever differences we have, we need to put to the side because we got to, we're trying to get to heaven. And as long as we are fighting against each other and, and then we're on the same team and we fight against each other, we're not going to be able to go out here and save this community. We got to be able to press forward. Young people, as you get ready to go back to school, you're going to meet some people who, who, who just don't mean you no well. You're at that age where you got to make that decision on, on what you're going to do. Most of y'all probably in middle school. Once you hit high school, it's going to take off for you. Those four years are going to fly by. And so what you have to do is you have to stay focused. You have to be determined. You have to stay motivated. You have to stay encouraged. I know this sermon may not have been one that was going to get a lot of amens and, and a whole lot of hand clapping and shouting and all that. But my job was to just encourage our youth and then also encourage the congregation. We got to bridge that gap. We had over probably at least about 60 to 80 young people at this building on yesterday, if not more. Just imagine what Northbound can do. We could go save every person that came in this building on yesterday that was not saved. And, 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 and that's, that's, that's our focus. Some people don't see the purpose of a bounce house. Some people don't see the purpose of a food truck. Some people don't see the purpose of a game truck. But what you have to understand is that the method may change, but the message will always stay the same. It, it, it's like when you're going fishing, you put that bait on the hook, and what you do is that you, you're throwing that fishing line out into the water. And depending on what you're fishing for, or what type of day it is, uh, you're going to be waiting for some time for that fish to grab on that hook. Well, that's what we're doing with our young people. We have to do things that they can relate to. Because what we want to do is get them inside this building. That's the bait, to get them inside this building. Once we get them inside this building, that's not to say we're going to save them immediately. So while you throw that uh, pole out in the water, you're waiting for that fish to hook onto your hook. And once you feel that he's biting, what you do is you grab him back and you reel them on in. But with our young people, once we throw that bait out, that game truck, to get them in here, and we just have a conversation with them, what we do is we just take them by the hand and we just walk with them. We're not trying to dump them in the water right away. We're trying to build that relationship. We're trying to get to know them. And this is not with our young people, that's just with anybody who we're trying to add to the body. You gotta build that relationship. I'm sorry, you can't just go to anybody today and just throw the Bible on and expect them to be baptized. Methods have changed. It's not say it's not effective. It's just that as time goes, the method has changed. Door knocking used to be a thing back in the day. For some people, it might still work now. For the most part, it may not. So now you have to be creative and come up with different ways that you can get people into this building. But we first have to work with one another. We have to work with one another. We have to work with one another Amen. for the common goal. Amen. There's a goal that we have, and that goal is to save souls and mature the saints. And the only way we can do that is that we're going to need all hands on deck. You're not involved in the ministry right now? Find out how you can get involved. You don't know what your gift is? Let's find out what your gift is. Because I'm telling you, when 2020 comes, and Northbound is going to take off. Amen. If I make it, can, can I put this? Can, can I? Can I? Okay, I, I want to see. I get the word. God's will. The best is yet to come. Y'all stand to y'all feet. You may be in, in a state in your life right now to where you may feel like you're not being loved. You, you may feel uh, that you are uh, uh, disencouraged at this time. Whatever it is you're dealing with, this is your opportunity to come and allow us to pray for you. Whatever it is you're going through, remember there's somebody else who's going through worse. Whatever it is you're going through right now, it's not nothing that you cannot get out of. But you gotta have the help of God. You gotta be able to just turn over to God, just pray to God, and just let God have his way. Don't go to God and, and tell him that you need help with this and then you telling God how he should bless you. He says, take your burdens to the Lord and, and leave him there. So I don't know why I may be talking to him this morning. 
But before we do our regular prayer call, I would ask if our young people, if they would come to the front along with their parents. I want to do a special prayer for our young people. As they get ready to go back to school on next week, I'm going to ask my young people, they, they will come up here, if they will come with their parents, your aunt, your grand. If you have a person, a young person,